the light is so much better today. I am thrilled. Maybe the fourth time is the charm. I have tried to film this video. This is my third day, the third day in a row that I've tried to film this video. And also the, <laughs> the second time today I've tried to tell this story. And I've got the peanut gallery over there who will probably chime in. Um, so yeah, tried to film it two days ago. That didn't work out. Tried to film it yesterday. And when you've got three kids, chaos ensues. And by the time I had quelled the chaos, the light had gone away. Optimal light if you use uh, natural light, which I like to do. It was around nap time uh, and Wilder was in bed. Pooped in his diaper. He is potty trained, but he does uh, use his... I uh, use a diaper at nap time and bedtime because he poops and I'd rather he poop in a diaper than in his underwear. So he had pooped and then was trying to clean it up, trying to take off his diaper and clean it up and stuff. And Oh my goodness. It was a mess. It was a big mess. At the same time, Marigold was crying because she was overly tired and needed to take a nap. And my oldest fox was in the kitchen using a screwdriver to dig out the sole of one of Wilder's shoes. And by the sole, I mean like the footbed, the interior of Wilder's shoes, thinking that it didn't belong. I don't know what he was thinking. Needless to say, I was really frustrated and uh, the video didn't get filmed. So I'm trying again today. For those of you who are new here, my name is Katie. This is Life Between Words. And I just told you a little bit about the life, and now we're gonna talk about the words. Um, I have some Christmas books to recommend to you, and hopefully this video will go up on Christmas Day. Hopefully I'm gonna upload videos every Wednesday. That's my goal. Maybe more than just Wednesday, but Wednesday's the only day that I'm gonna commit to. I know it's a little late to talk about Christmas book recommendations on the day of Christmas, because who's going to read Christmas books after Christmas? But I'm still going to recommend them, and maybe you'll come back to this video next year. Unlikely. Or maybe you will write these down to remember some good holiday reading for next year. Because you're not going to read these, except for maybe a couple. A couple of these technically take place over Christmas, but could be read any t and enjoyed any time of the year. So we're gonna get started. I have a variety of genres and categories to get through, including a couple picture books, because even as an adult, I really enjoy a good picture book, especially one that has been beautifully illustrated, as the two that I'm going to show you have been. All right, let's just get started. So, okay, so first I'm gonna talk about a really popular series. I read this series last year. It's by Ellen Hildebrand, and it's called the Winter Street series. The first novel in the series is called Winter Street. It's about the Quinn family who live on Nantucket. All of Ellen Hildebrand's books. Elin, Ellen, I'm not actually sure how to pronounce that first name. I know a couple Elins, Ellens. One of them pronounces it Ellen, one of them pronounces it Elin. So I really don't know how this author pronounces that name, her name. Nevertheless, uh, all of her books take place on Nantucket. These books take place over um, the Christmas holiday season on Nantucket, and it follows the Quinn family. It follows all of the all of the Quinn family, the two estranged uh, headships of the family, the the husband and wife. Although they are, like I said, they're estranged. They're divorced, and then their children. I really enjoyed reading these books last year. I zoomed through them. They go down like butter, my friends. It is very atmospheric in that you feel like you are on Nantucket. It is such a charming setting and you really feel like you're there. These books are really fun and Christmassy. I recommend them. Okay, next I've got a book by Rosamund Pilcher called Winter Solstice. This book takes place over the holiday season, but rather than really focusing on Christmas, it focuses on the winter solstice because this book follows a cast of characters that um, are not in the Christmas mood. Um, the main character, Elfrida Phipps, is a retired actress, um, and she finds herself at a cottage in Scotland and pulls together this motley crew of people who don't really know each other. They're all strangers at the beginning of the book, but she befriends them and they decide to celebrate the winter solstice um, in the same way that like a group of friends or a family would celebrate Christmas. I mean, it's more than just that event. The book is really long. This is a chunker. Rosamund Pilcher writes a delightful novel that just embraces you like a big warm hug. If you all, like myself, like to read Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol at this time of year, I highly recommend that you also pick up the book Mr. Dickens and His Carol. This is a fictionalized account of Charles Dickens writing his masterpiece, 
A Christmas Carol. And in this book, Charles Dickens' life sort of emulates the life of Scrooge, the character that he's writing in A Christmas Carol. I don't think that it is very historically accurate in terms of how Dickens came up with the story of A Christmas Carol, but it sure is fun to read, and nothing says Christmas like a little Victorian England, am I right? I really, really enjoyed Mr. Dickens and his Carol. Next, I have some middle grade books. I am a huge fan of middle grade. I think middle grade done well can be enjoyed by all ages. As you guys know, I host Middle Grade March, which will be happening again in March. But I read middle grade other times of the year, and I, and I love it. In terms of Christmas books, I do have a few to recommend. The first is The Vanderbeekers of 141st Street by Yari Karina Jan Glazer. This book takes place in the week before Christmas. It follows the Vanderbeeker family. In this family there are five children. They live in a brownstone in Harlem and their landlord has decided not to renew their lease. So the children have to devise a plan or many plans to convince their landlord otherwise. He is curmudgeonly, he is unfriendly, and they want to change his mind. That's what this book is about and it is delightful. If you're a fan of the Penderwicks, which I am, this would be a great book to satiate the Penderwick hole in your heart. Um, it is a series. I haven't read the other two. I think this is the only one that takes place at Christmas time. It's not overly Christmassy in tone. It's just that it takes place in the week before Christmas, and there's lots of sort of Christmas things happening in the book. But I wouldn't say you get an overly holiday vibe. However, still a great book to read around this time of year, and I highly recommend it, especially if you're a fan of middle grade or if you want to know what all the fuss is about middle grade and you're an adult who wants to dip her toes, his or her toes, into middle grade, this book is great. Another fantastic middle grade book about Christmas is called A Boy Called Christmas by Matt Haig. Matt Haig has written a lot of, mostly he writes adult fiction. I think there's one called The Humans. I could be completely wrong about that. I actually own one of his adult books. And right now, the title is completely escaping me. This book, though, A Boy Called Christmas, is about a little boy named Nicholas. And it's sort of a Santa Claus origin story. It is completely and totally rollicking good Christmas fun and just a great story. It follows Nicholas in his journey to become Santa Claus. Obviously, at the beginning of the book, he doesn't even know he's going to become Santa Claus. And Santa Claus doesn't even exist yet. So, um, this book, it's sort of comparable to something like Roald Dahl in terms of the humor. It is funny, but it's also very heartwarming. Matt Haig writes stories that have a lot of depth, and this one does too. I really enjoyed this. I'd love to read it again. I tried to pick it up with my five-year-old this year, but he's just not quite ready for a novel-length story. So unfortunately we're going to have to hold off on this for a while, but I do really look forward to reading this again. It's a great book no matter your age, so don't listen to me saying that it's adorable. Listen to me saying that it's a great Christmas book. There's also some other books in this series, at least one. Um, I think it's called The Girl Who Saved Christmas, which I also haven't read, but I'd love to. So there's that. I just finished this book, so this is my one contribution from this year's reading, and that is Christmas with Anne. It's a collection of short stories, not all of them. Uh, not all of them feature Anne of Green Gables, Anne Shirley. In fact, only two of these books feature Anne Shirley. The first short story in this book is probably the most iconic Christmas scene in Ellen Montgomery's collected works, and that is when Matthew gives Anne a dress with puffed sleeves. But the rest of the short stories are taken from other sort of collections that Ella Montgomery has. Um, I think a lot of them are maybe from the Chronicles of Avonlea, or at least some of them. But most of these short stories in the book I didn't recognize. They do sort of feature Ella Montgomery's telltale writing, heartwarming stories that are about sort of the, the resiliency of the human spirit and um, hope in dire circumstances. A lot of these stories are about family overcoming family feuds, which I thought was kind of funny. Ella Montgomery's characters often have the flaw of pride, and that is true in these stories. There's at least three stories in here in which the characters have to uh, overcome some sort of feud, some sort of grudge that they've been harboring for years against a family member, um, which of course Anne has that character flaw, doesn't she? So. I didn't, I didn't really realize until reading this book that that's something that Ellen Montgomery writes a lot, but she does it really well, and she does it in a way that is so warm and 
lovely. She's one of my favorite writers. If I could write like any author, it would be Ella Montgomery. I have two more picture books to share. The first is one that my our family discovered this year. It's called Pick a Pine Tree, and it's by Patricia Tote. Tot? Tote? Anyway, it's got lovely illustrations. It follows the story of a family who picks a Christmas tree, brings it home, decorates it, and it's no longer just a pine tree. It is now, I'll show you the picture, a Christmas tree. The illustrations are beautiful. The story is sweet. I love a good story with rhyming verse. This one does it really well. And I will bet money on the fact that this will become a Christmas classic. The next book should be a Christmas classic, but isn't because it's been around for a while and I have never heard anyone else talk about it. And that is Great Joy by Kate DiCamillo. Kate DiCamillo is one of my favorite children's book authors. She's so wonderful. And the man who illustrated this picture book is Bagram Iba Tuween. Iba Tulin. I actually don't know how to pronounce his name. And he illustrated um, The Miraculous Journey of Edward Tulane, which is my, maybe my favorite Kate DiCamillo book. <clears throat> but anyway, the illustrations in here are stunning. They are so beautiful. And the story is also so beautiful. The story is about a little girl who lives in New York City, and every day she observes an organ grinder who stands on the corner by her apartment building with his monkey. He's a street performer. Anyway, she asks her mother where he, where he goes at night, where he sleeps. And um, that picture that I showed you is her looking out the window one night at him on the street corner still. And she invites him to her Christmas pageant, and it's just a really, really beautiful story. It makes me tear up when I read it. I love it so much. So there you go, folks. That is not an exhaustive Christmas book list. These are just some Christmas books that I've read in the past couple years and really enjoyed. There are many more that I have yet to read, so I will probably have to do an updated Christmas book list in a couple years. With that, my friends, I hope you're having a great Christmas day. If you celebrate Christmas, if you don't, I hope you're just having a great day. <coughs> <coughs> Guys, I have had this cough since before I gave birth to Marigold. I've had it for like almost, no, yeah, almost three months, three months. I've had it for over three months, crazy. Anyway, I'm going to show you Marigold now, and then I'm going to sign off. Well, I'll sign off here, and then I'll show you Marigold. Like I said, hope you're having a great day. I will see you in my next video. I'm really excited to do some um, year-end kind of wrap-up videos. I also have some great ideas for the upcoming year, and I know a few of you were concerned that I wasn't going to be doing book videos anymore. I got some comments like that in my last video. Don't worry. I will not stop making book content. Clearly, my first video back is a book video. It's like a huge part of my life, so not to worry, my friends. Books will always be part of this channel. I'll see you in my next video. Bye. Are you going to take a picture of me? I'm recording. You want to say hi? Uh, hi. Um, my name is Bob. I'm All right, here's Goldie looking angry because she's been sitting here waiting for me. <laughs> Hello, Miss Marigold. I'm going to pick you up now, okay? You don't need to look so angry anymore. <laughs>